Hey guys, welcome to this video. So today I'm going to be talking about personal statements. This has been very highly requested since I started posting on YouTube, so hopefully this video will be useful. I'll be talking about all the things that I incorporate into every personal statement that I write and things that are specific to applying to medical school. Um, obviously these uh, tips can be transferred to any other degree course or any other application that you make. So hopefully um, if you're not a medical student or if you're not somebody who's applying to medical school, this will still be helpful for you as well. Okay, so my experience of personal statements, um, I've had to apply to medical school, obviously, like most of you guys, and I applied through UCAS, so I had to write my personal statement for medicine for UCAS. I also had to write a personal statement for my master's degree, and I also had to write some personal statements for several jobs that I've applied for um, all throughout, um, you know, all throughout the years. I also had to write um, a personal statement to apply for the academic foundation program. So I've had to write quite a few personal statements um, in my time. I've read loads of people's personal statements and I've also helped other people um, do their personal statements. So even though I've done all that, that doesn't make me a personal statement professional. So these tips are just um, obviously things that I've incorporated into my personal statement and things that I've, I've incorporated into people that have helped personal statements. So they're not gospel and um, hopefully there's a tip here and there that you don't know yet or something that you will learn throughout this video but I'm not a professional so you know it's not gospel whatever I'm gonna say okay so just a few things to bear in mind the first thing is that applications uh, to medical school and to Oxford and Cambridge uh, close on the 15th of October 2016 so that's applications for September 2017 so obviously you want to make sure your application is submitted way before that and um, you know today is the 18th of September so you have just under a month to sort out your personal statement and also your application if you haven't already I'm assuming that most of you guys have already started I'm hoping that you've already started uh, on your personal statement and this video will just be something additional to what you've already written another thing about UCAS uh, specifically to personal statements is that you're allowed to have a maximum of 4,000 characters for your personal statement and a minimum of 1,000 characters. So obviously if you have something less than 1,000 characters or something more than 4,000 characters, your application is not going to be submitted because you've gone above or below the limit. So obviously, you know, we're in 2016 and everybody knows what a character is, but just to make sure everybody's on the same sort of starting point, um, characters are obviously different to the word count, characters are anything that you type on a keyboard basically, so a space is a character, a full stop is a character, a comma is a character, any letter is a character. So you're allowed a maximum of 4,000 characters when you do a personal statement in UCAS and a minimum of 1,000 characters. So make sure that obviously you, you, know, you meet that criteria because that's just something easy to meet. Yeah? You don't want to um, not have your application submitted because of that stupid thing. Okay, so let's get started with the tips. I've actually written everything down on my sheet of paper here. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking um, at the sheet of paper. So the first thing that you want to have on your personal statement is, you know, a catchy, interesting opening statement. Bear in mind that um, admissions tutors have read hundreds, probably thousands of people's personal statements and they're, they're going to be really bored. Uh, by the time they get to your personal statement, they want something that's going to, you know, really crank up their interest and make them want to read on um, the rest of your per personal statement and find out more about you. So have something that's catchy, something that's interesting to start off with. So things like um, I've seen people start with, you know, quotes or statistics, you know, 500,000 children die of hunger every day or something like that. Obviously, that's not true, but... Um, something like that. You want to start with something different. Some people start with, you know, generic sort of, you know, I've always wanted to do medicine because this, this, or medicine is a science and things. And, you know, that's really boring. The admissions tutor has heard this over and over again over the years, and they want something different. If you just start with something like, from a young age, I've wanted to do medicine, or 
uh, medicine is an art and a science and all this or um, what other bad things um, I I want to help people so I'll, I'll do medicine things like that are not going to get you any points because they're just generic things that you know we already know that you want to do medicine because you want to help people we already know that you probably wanted to do medicine from a young from a young age and all that so there's no point starting with any of that some people start with quotes some people start with statistics some people just start with a blatant i want to do medicine because you know something different something that's going to um, capture the interest of the admissions tutor is better than some stupid thing. Um, I will type all the things to avoid in the description bar uh, because I've, I've written a ton of them and you know going through them throughout this video will probably take the longest time so I'll write most of them in the description bar but as I've said I've given you some examples now. So after starting with a really catchy and interesting um, opening statement you want to then launch into something that will tell the admissions tutor why you want to apply to medicine this is obviously specific to you thousands of people have different reasons for applying to medicine but if your reason is just to help people or if your reason is just because you like science or if your reason is just because you like the human body then that's not a good enough reason to be applying to medicine obviously everybody who does medicine likes to help people like science like the human body and all that good stuff but you want something different yeah I'm not saying that you need to make up something unique and interesting because then you'll be caught out during interview if you lie don't ever lie on your personal statement if your reason is purely because you want to help people then obviously say it but that's not that shouldn't be your only reason for wanting to do medicine because you can help people as I've said in other videos um, you can help people doing other jobs you know being a cleaner being a a porter, being a bus driver, all these jobs allow you to help people. Doing medicine is more than just helping people, yeah? So make sure your reason for wanting to apply to medicine is a good one. You can't just apply to medicine because your parents told you to apply or because you got good grades at university and that's the only thing you want to do. You really need a good reason. As I've said, admissions tutors are bored already and they have thousands of applications every day that they have to read through so you know don't make your application one of those that's just be, that's just put in the no pile you want to capture their interest and you want to be genuine you want them to know that okay this person is a good asset to to our university they're not just going to come here for the prestige of having to do um, medicine or coming to our medical school sort of thing so have a good reason a good genuine reason for wanting to apply to medicine and then write about this after your opening statement that's catchy and interesting okay so the next bit after your why medicine you want to talk about why not any other job so why not nursing why not a bus driver why not you know a science teacher this is um, your chance to show that you know you have researched medicine you know what medicine is and you 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 know you have explored every option and medicine is the only thing that you want to do so this is the section that you're going to write about that as i've said if your reason to do medicine is to help people then you, you're not going to be convincing enough to say okay i want to do medicine i don't want to do nursing because both jobs allow you to help people yeah so make sure that your reason is good enough and then make sure you have a good enough reason uh, as to why you don't want to do any other job in the world because this is the this is this is the section that you're going to write about about it okay so in this section you want to talk about what you have done specifically to make sure that medicine is the right course for you so in this section you have the chance to talk about your work experience uh, your exposure to ill people, what you've done in terms of research, you know, have you been on a summer school program, have you spoken to doctors, have you shadowed a doctor, have you been with other allied health care professionals, so have you been with nurses and physiotherapists, what have you done to make sure that medicine is the right job and the right pathway for you? 
okay so in this next section you are going to write about what you have done to make uh, to show that you're good enough for medicine so you know have you been consistently academically good have you got leadership roles have you um, have you done extra sort of extra subjects or extra work outside of your normal academia outside of your normal A levels outside of your GCSEs have you been consistently good to to do medicine uh, this just in, this doesn't have to be just about academia um, you know if you've done things like a first aid course basic life support thing then you can talk about it here as well because obviously admissions students are not expecting you to be able to um, do advanced life support you know you're just um, your pre-med yeah so you haven't had much exposure to uh, practical exposure to things to do with medicine if you have obviously then talk about it but if you haven't and most people won't have had any practical exposure to medicine but some people will definitely have a basic life support certificate I had one um, and you can talk about it during this next section Okay, so we're getting towards the end now. Um, this section uh, you should talk about before your conclusion and this is going to be a section that's showing that you're a well-rounded person. So this is your chance to talk about any sort of extracurricular activities that you do, any sport, any musical instruments that you play, anything that you, you, you do outside of you know, your A-levels, outside of your degree, outside of anything academic. So talk about you know what you've done, what you love doing in your spare time, if you love reading, if you love going to the gym and all that stuff. You will know from uh, previous videos that I made that I said if you play an instrument or if you play a sport then do it to as high a level as you can because this is going to show that you know you are resilient, you're persistent and you can stick at something which you know all these qualities you need to do medicine because it's a five, six year course for for most people and university uh, mission students need to know that you know you're able you have the stamina to get to the end and the way that you're going to show that you have stamina is if you've done something over a long period of time so again here you can talk about any volunteering opportunities that you've done if you haven't um, already spoken about it uh, talk about any any um, competitions that you've won any competitions that you've participated in so ne not necessarily one but even if you participated in a competition then talk about it here because it's going to show that you're well-rounded you're also a person rather than just a robot who's just good at passing exams you know this is something that is required uh, for doing medicine you, it's not just academic you, you get really depressed if it's just if your sole focus is just academia so make sure you speak about um, anything that you know any other thing that you do outside of reading in this section okay so in your conclusion you want something that lingers in the mind I always say this to people because the admissions tutor as I've already said is bored already so you want something that's going to stay in their mind so that they know that oh wow I can't wait to see this person during interview yeah so if I remember uh, what I wrote in my in my personal statement as a conclusion it was a long time ago I wish I'd kept my personal statement because I was really proud of it <laughs> uh, but I wrote something like um, you know for as long as there are people doctors will be needed uh, yeah so something that lingers in the pe in, in the mind something like a pledge not something um, you know some generic thing about you wanting to do medicine medicine is a the science, medicine is an art and all this, you know, this has all been written over the last hundreds and thousands of years, you know, you want something different. My aim for you, for you guys, is to have a personal statement that, that is completely different to everybody else, you know, you want something unique, something different and something that lingers in the mind, something that captures the admissions tutor's interest so that they're not bored, they pick up your personal statement, they read it and they, they, you know, they smile, they're happy and they want to see you at interview. Don't be boring and don't just copy any other personal statement out there. There are thousands and thousands of personal statements um, on the internet that are bad. Some are good but most are bad and also don't be paying money to people um, to help you write a personal statement or to um, or to write your personal statement for you, you know, because it's not worth it. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of money because that's 
that doesn't guarantee that you're going to get into medicine. So, you know, you're perfectly capable of writing your own statement and of making it good enough. You know, this is just a substitute to the rest of your academic profile and this is your chance to show that, you know, you're different to everyone. So things to remember about your personal statement are this. Number one, it's your chance to show that you're different to everyone. You're unique and you're not just a robot who's good at passing exams. You know, everyone who's applying to medicine is going, is going to have good grades at A-level, good grades at GCSE. So, you know, before your personal statement, everybody is on the same level, yeah? So this is your chance to show that, you know, my name is John, I'm not the same as Emma. You know, we're all different people and this is how I'm going to shine and this is how I'm going to show you that I'm better than Emma or I'm better than John, yeah? So this is your chance to, 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 to shine, basically. Uh, the second point is start with a good, catchy opening statement don't be boring and don't just pick anything that you know you find on the internet or things that have been written before you know medicine has been a course for billions of years so you know admissions tutors have read and have and know all the tricks to uh, personal statements so don't just copy something off the internet don't pay somebody to do your personal statement for you um, you're perfectly capable of doing your statement, so just do it yourself and do it well. Obviously, work work on it every day, but not not you know persistently every day. Do it maybe three times a week, four times a week of specifically working on your personal statement. But if you look at it every day, it becomes boring. Yeah. What I did is I worked on my personal statement and then I gave up for a good sort of week, week and a half prior to submitting it. And then before I submitted it, maybe uh, maybe a few days before submitting it, I reread it and it sounded completely different to what I thought it sounded and I tweaked it a little bit and then I submitted. Don't spend too much time on it because you're just going to change your mind and it's going to sound boring and all that. So write it, make people read it. So you send it to your parents, send it to your sisters, send it to your friends you know allow people to read it and then once you're happy with it submit it don't spend too much time on it um i used to read people's personal statements um after I, after i got into medical school and you know people got really stressed about it which you don't need to get stressed about obviously applying to medical school is stressful and you want to get in and all that but don't get like unnecessarily stressed about your personal statement because at the end of the day it's just a personal statement yeah um, unfortunately I don't have time anymore to read people's personal statements because as I said I'm now working <laughs> but um, by all means send me questions in the comment section and I will answer specific questions if you want me to but um, I, I don't have time to read anybody's um, you know complete personal statement um, at the moment the next thing to bear in mind is this is your chance to showcase what you have done uh, to make sure medicine is the right thing for you, to make sure that nothing else in the world is the right thing for you. So you're going to show that you've done work experience, you've shadowed people, you've done summer school if you have and you, you, know, you know that medicine is the only thing in the world that you want to do and this is your chance to show this in your personal statement. That's about it guys. Thanks very much for watching this video. Hopefully it's been useful for you. Um, during editing this, if I think of any other things um, that I missed out in the video, then I'll add it either on my blog or in the description bar. So uh, just read the description bar and if I put a link to my blog, then click on it and there'll be some extra information um, which I forgot to mention in this video. Um, I will see you in my next video. Bye.